Look, starting a successful business is really challenging no matter who you are, yep. where you live. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, only half of small businesses survive within the first five years. Yeah, and for veterans, it wasn't always so challenging, but nearly 50% of military veterans returning home from World War II started businesses. Unfortunately, that number is down now to less than 5% today. So this morning, Ryan Johnson, the co-founder of Bugle, and also PenFed Foundation President Andrea McCarran, here to share how veterans can transition to business ownership and how they can help you with that. Good morning to you both. We're glad to have this conversation because we do have so many yeah, veterans in really our area do. and families of veterans that are watching with us. So thank you for being here. Yes. Thank you, Susan and Taylor, for having us. Yes. Thank you so much. And thank you for your service. And you're yeah. still serving our community. Mm -hmm. So, Ryan, talk about thank your you. military experience and how you transitioned into the business world. Absolutely. So I spent 10 years in the Army as an infantry officer and then as a Green Beret uh, before leaving the military in order to change the world of volunteering. Uh, we started by simply seeing a problem we couldn't unsee, which was how incredibly challenging it was to organize volunteering events. Despite the fact that one in four Americans volunteer annually, there are limited software solutions that make organizing or finding volunteering events a simple process. So with Bugle, we're changing that. We've reduced the time it takes to organize volunteering events by 50%. So if you're a nonprofit, we would love to be able to help you out and make it easier to have a meaningful impact in your communities. That's great. And uh, Andrea, your your program also helps and kind of steps in in that matter too. You have something called the Vet Veteran Entrepreneur Program. D tell us a little bit more about that and how it is supporting businesses just like Bugle. Well, just by way of example, we are super proud of Ryan's success. When he came to us, he had seven nonprofit clients. Now he has more than 200 and has clients in multiple countries across the world. He is simplifying volunteerism. It should be easy so people can just scan in on their phone or use GPS to check in. They'll get photos and an impact report after volunteering. So we take the best and the brightest veteran entrepreneurs across the country free of charge. We train them up. Then we mentor them for at least a year and give them a one-on-one -on -one mentor that is industry specific to the business that they want to create. Oh, that is great. And Ryan, from your perspective, talk about why this is so important. Um, I'll start uh, quoting what you guys had opened this up with, which is starting a business is hard. And there's an incredible number of things that you have to take into consideration. And I think just regardless of what industry you're coming from, whether that's from the military or from the private sector, there are so many things to learn and perhaps so many subject matter uh, pieces that you haven't touched. Mm -hmm. And uh, mentorship is critical. And I've been incredibly grateful to the PenFed Foundation and their incredible group uh, network of mentors that have helped us see in our blind spots and be more prepared for the future to grow a meaningful business. And veterans make these incredible entrepreneurs. They're resilient, they're mission focused, they're adaptable, they're resourceful. So we just embrace that. Veterans are not broken. Veterans are community assets and we just really want the country to understand what natural born leaders they truly are. Well, that's the truth. And I mean, we've heard yeah. that in several interviews that we've done about that certain skill set that, mm -hmm. that they have to be able to enter the workforce and maybe start their own business. Yeah. I mean, Andrew, we've talked about a lot of hurdles that are in the way, maybe some challenges they face. And some of that is just location and, and where they set up shop. What are you noticing as far as um, cities that maybe are a, a little bit more um, of a chance for them to really mm -hmm. grow and succeed? Any that are topping that list? Well, every year we do this study. It is just released right now. And we look at uh, livability. Is there affordable housing? Mm -hmm. Is there quality health care? Are there good schools? And we also look at economic growth. So for the second year in a row, Raleigh, North Carolina is topping the list. They're number mm -hmm. one. Number two, Washington, D.C., probably due to our proximity to federal government and all the resources that come with that. And number three, Seattle, Washington, also a very military-friendly state with a a lot of resources for veterans. So we're really looking forward to Charleston making the list next year. <laughs> so where can we learn a little bit more about this and maybe, I don't know, encourage some more people to get involved? 
that would be great. Just send them straight to penfedfoundation.org. That's P-E-N-F-E-D foundation.org. We just opened up the application process, so we are actively recruiting veteran entrepreneurs, small business owners from across the country, as well as quality mentors. And to learn more about Ryan's awesome business, it's buglevolunteers.com. Oh, that's great. great. Yes. Oh, um, yes. And, and so nice to hear about what your organizations are doing uh -huh. to lift up our servicemen and women uh -huh. as they return home. Again, Ryan, thank you so much for your yes. service to our country. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. And it was a great conversation with both of you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah.